Where you go is where you look, they say. An observation, which is reading the road, seeing as far ahead as you can, hazard perception, is fundamental to fast and safe riding. But where do riders actually look when they're riding? And is there a difference between experienced riders and novice riders? Bennett's Bike Social is going to find out. So we're here at Bedford Autodrome and a Yamaha Tracer 700 and a very special piece of hardware. These are pupil invisible eye tracking glasses developed by Pupil Labs in Germany. The glasses have two tiny cameras measuring the position and gaze of each eyeball plus a camera on the side of the glasses recording the forward view. Eye tracking is often used by companies who want to understand what shoppers look at when they're scanning the shelves. But we think this is the first time this technology has ever been used to track what motorcyclists actually look at. And so to help us, we have here today, Jason O'Halloran, uh, riding for McCann's Yamaha in the British Superbike Championship, currently lying second. Uh, and you're, so your day job is riding really, really fast. Are you ever actually aware of what you look at when you're riding? To be honest, I, I've never actually really thought about it, but um, I'm not overly aware of it. It's sort of subconscious, you know, you sort of just, I've done it for so many years now, you just sort of know where to look. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see what uh, what we find out today. Yeah, I mean, does that, that, that sort of, in the racer's mantra, that kind of looking through the corner and as far ahead as you can, is kind of one of those things that they teach people on the sort of the track day schools. And is that something that just comes naturally? Have you ever actually kind of thought, you know, I'm, I'm not looking in the right place? Have you ever kind of thought that? Or? No, you just sort of, it just becomes natural over a number of years. And, um, you know, in races, it changes a little bit. Depends on who's ahead of you, if you're trying to make a pass or something like that. But normally when you're on your own, you're, you're sort of looking through, you know, I think you're looking a long way through the corner. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, let's, let's see. Okay, do you ever get distracted? By other stuff at the side of the circuit? I mean, uh, you know. Only on cool down laps, only after the race, once it's all finished, but not, not during the race, no. Cool, excellent. And we also have with us Michael Mann, uh, Bennett's Bike Social web editor. And Michael, it's probably best to describe you as a, a handy track day rider. I would run in the advanced group, I don't know about handy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you ever think about, same question really, do you ever think about what you're looking at when you're riding around a track? Do you easily get distracted? I think, I think the answer is yes, I do but only because you're probably asking me now it's triggered a thought process. Yeah, yeah. Definitely yeah. when I began riding on the road and the first time you're on track, uh, there's so much information that's going on. There's so many people telling you, you do this, do that, you'll find this and then and follow that. It's all very overwhelming. And then the more training that you do, both on road and on track, you then start to think much more about looking ahead and planning where you're going. Um, certainly when it comes to the corners and the, and the structure of a corner and how you pick your spots uh, and, and looking ahead of course as well so yeah I think it comes with experience and, and the more riding you do the more um, further ahead you, you do tend to looking. But again it's kind of a natural process it's not sort of you, you have, you've never found yourself mid corner at Cadwell going oh hang on I should be looking over there not here it's not a conscious thing it's uh... Sometimes I think and, and, and sometimes on track um, you'll see something on the floor you'll see something ahead or something will catch your eye and you'll, and you'll start darting your eyes around uh, and you lose focus, lose concentration, all of a sudden you, you know, that's, that's when you're prone to making a mistake or at least, uh, certainly not running an optimum corner. Yeah. And we have also with us Chris Newell, who's Bennett's bike social marketing manager. And Chris, I don't want to be rude, but it's safe to say you're a track day novice. What do you run at in track days? What group? Um, I usually win the novice group on track <laughs> days. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy track days. I like going to the tracks and you know, I, I watch more BSV than uh, than actually ride, doing track days, and I, yeah, I'm, I'm very novice in in terms of track days. I do a, a more road riding than I do on track. Yeah. In terms of where I look on the track, I, I know where I need to be looking half the time, but there's so many other stuff to distract me, and I'm looking at other stuff, uh, sort of 
the braking markers and yeah I'm, I'm, I'm just I look all over the place really there's no clear direction. Are you kind of aware that you're supposed to be looking at a specific place or is that you know are you kind of do you, do, you, do you tell yourself off for looking at your clocks when you should be looking through a corner? Or? Yeah yeah a lot of the time so I've done a, I've done done a few schools where they say come into a corner and they, they say where you should be looking but I maybe do it for the first lap and then like you say I, I get distracted by other stuff and well I do a lot of road riding as well I'm very risk averse so I'll be looking at stuff on track and you know stuff I shouldn't be looking at but it'll be taking my my mind away from other stuff. Ooh. So so we have the track we have the riders of different abilities we have the hardware we have the bike let's go and find out if what you guys are actually looking at when you're riding. So the idea here is for each rider to put in around about five laps on a circuit that they've never seen before and as it turns out on a bike they've never ridden before. Now, the track is a very, fairly sterile environment, there's not an awful lot of distraction going on, there are no lamp posts, there are no manhole covers, so we should be able to find out exactly where the rider's eyes are looking at in a kind of a pure sense, it's a sterile environment so they're not, they're not looking around for distractions or hazards and there's nothing else to distract their view. Now, traditionally, racers look through a corner. And how far you look is really important because it buys you time, effectively, in the sense that, that if you can see something far away, you've got more time to react to it. And even if it's only a millisecond, that really, really counts. On a track, it's about checking the right line. It's about gauging your braking points. Um, and it's also just kind of, uh, even though the track is the same every single lap and nothing ever varies, it's still just kind of making sure that you're in the right position every single time. So the really interesting thing I think is going to be the differences between the riders. It's going to be interesting to see what the differences are between the riders first laps and their second lap and their third lap and their fourth lap and their fifth lap once they've found out where they're going. But also the difference between this, this sort of track novice in Chris uh, and the sort of intermediate rider, the handy track day rider of Michael and then Jason, whether Jason's sort of looking, he never even looks at the clocks, he doesn't even look to the side, he's just constantly looking exactly where he's going. Um, or it may all be completely random. We may, we may find that, that everybody's looking in exactly the same place. It's just interesting to find out. As I said, I don't think it's ever been done before. So we'll have to see what the data comes up with. Okay, so we've had our, uh, our fun on track. We've all done sort of five or six laps, you guys. Um, so that's time to actually find out if we can see any differences in where you looked and what you looked at. So what we have is three, three movies on screen here. And if we can fire up, so should we do you, Chris, have a look at Yeah, yeah, have a first? look. Let's have a look. Right, so. Here we are, putting on your gloves. If we fast forward a bit to you going out on the track. Chris will be looking in the mirrors all the time, looking at his, <laughs> his hair's all right. All right. Here we go. 
And so this long line kind of indicates the dwell time that you've spent looking at something. And so when it's just flicking around like that, it means your eyes are literally on the move all over the place. What can we see? So we're constantly looking back at the clocks. Yeah. Let's put your visor down. Visor's down. We're scanning around. We're, eyes are moving around everywhere, so we're not fixing on any particular point. I was a bit confused at the beginning because I've... I think my glasses weren't on straight and I was a bit distracted so I was I think I was looking at everything but where I should be going right about now <laughs> it wasn't until the end of this straight and the chicane that I actually and you can see your eyes flicking down on. looking at the clocks so you're looking at your top speed yeah see how fast you're going even though you've kind of at this point you've got no idea where the peeling point is for the first corner yeah this is your first lap out of the pits isn't it yeah yeah No, it's just here I lift my visor up and because I was so I was even conscious what I was looking at because I didn't think the glasses were on right. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Again, look how low your vision is. You're looking right down under. Here we as go. You're going around, oh, there, there we go. A bit of a visor change. Right from here, I put my race face on. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this. Um, yeah, look. Completely looking at probably the place. So again, you look like long you're looking at the apex. Yeah. You're actually on the apex and you're still looking at it. And then, and then there's a white building over there. So yeah. It's quite interesting. Seeing his mate over there. Yeah. <laughs> Give him a quick wave. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking predominantly like you just said. Then, when I come to a corner, I'm so focused on just making that corner and at least trying to get somewhere near the apex that. That just takes my whole focus like there. I'm, that's all I'm looking at. Whereas here, I should already be looking at the next corner. Yeah. And, yeah. and away. But it's unbelievable that it's managed to track. Exactly yeah, it's good, what isn't it? Thinking. So we should be. We've got braking markers on this circuit as there well. There are, yeah, on the right hand side. Yeah, I'm looking at them up on the right. <clears throat> and your eyes are very much focusing on what's in front of you there across the. There's one. Yeah, is that a, okay? And there's a braking marker. Down, yeah, looking yeah. down, looking yeah. at my gears. And then we're looking at the apex. St still looking at the apex. Where's the exit? There it is. Yes, yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> it's over there. Yeah, but see, look, looking back and. Forward. Yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating. Checking which gear you're in. As you can see, yeah, there's so much movement with my eyes, but not at the right places. So I guess it's. Yeah, I'm looking at all the stuff that I think are. Not distractions, but yeah. I even at one point saw like there was some birds to like the right <laughs> flying birds to the yeah. right of um, the okay. cones. So you, and you're just conscious that oh, are they gonna they gonna fly out or they what are they gonna? Which do? is kind of a road riding thing, almost. As yeah, saying, yeah. Hazard avoidance on the road. Yeah, like even a... that section there, like it looks like another track joins, and I even looked to the left to see if a car was sort of or if anything else was coming that way. Okay, shall have a look at uh, your lap, Michael. Of course. Let's see what we can get from you. This is quite nerve wracking. Is this kind of yeah, like, bit, oh my God, yeah. it's like an Especially insight into all my mistakes will be here. <laughs> when you've got okay. so many eyes on it. Let's have a look, see if we can get you coming out on track. Here we go. You're welcome to fast forward to the second lap or the third lap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, after Chris had been on the bike, you see, I knew the tyres were warm. <laughs> <laughs> so confident straight away. <laughs> But straight away, we can see that there's much more, your vision is much higher. Your average, the amount of time you're spending looking up, as opposed to looking at the clocks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there we go. Now we're looking at the clocks. And again, so this is for the top speeds, presumably. Yeah, like top speed. And also making sure it's in what gear I was in. Uh, double checking which gear I was in. Again, look, you're scanning the horizon there. Just trying to see, you looked at that tree and then... Because this is the first lap I've ever done on this circuit. You're trying to pinpoint all of the... Yeah. All of the potential markers, I guess, or, or, or hazards. I see again, you had a quick flick there, didn't you? Right up to the, yeah. through the corner. Yeah. You haven't got a mate in that white building, have you? <laughs> okay, I haven't got any mates. <laughs> yeah, looking ahead for the brake marker. Again, the vision's a little bit higher. Quick check for speed. Where's the brake marker? There's one there. Then we come down. We're on the brakes come now, up. aren't we? Yeah, come up out of the Again, looking visor. through the corner. He seems to be looking at stuff a lot longer than I am. 
the line seems to be a lot more bolder and longer than yeah. Yours yeah. flicks a bit more, yeah. doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. A bit more Yours left, right, right. <laughs> everywhere. Right, like, yeah, it does. Yeah. So a quick look around the corner. Looking like, through the corner there, <clears> yeah. <throat> looking backwards though. Checking, looking, yeah. looking at the corner, looking back, looking back at the corner again. Yeah. Maybe it's quite and conscious. You, it's almost as well. like you're looking. You're looking right across here, looking for. Does the track actually follow around even further? Yeah, you're looking for your exit point, aren't you? To yeah. see at what point you can get roll the throttle on. <clears throat> Some of these are tricky corners again because of the, the the other tracks joining our track. You're not quite sure again of reference points of, of where the corner starts and it, ends, and you've got rumble strips here, there, and everywhere. It's almost um, kind of distracting in a way, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. See, so, you know the cameras are up here, so I'm all tucked in. Look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's interesting. Shall I look at yours, Jason? See what yeah, you've got up to. Lot, yeah. This is how it should be, don't they? Good long look at the apex, your first apex. It'd be interesting to see when you look at the clocks for the first time, because Michael was coming onto the back straight the first time he looked down. Yeah. Well, there's a quick one there. Oh, and another second one. Nicely tucked in. Yeah, and now we're coming through. So this is your chicane here, isn't it? That's it. Just yeah, it is, yeah. On the apex. The tighter right. There we go. The eyes dart there. I mean, a quick look across. Yeah. And again, you see your, your eyes are straying to the exit, yeah. trying to find an exit, looking for the exit. Like especially there. Yeah. Yeah. I think the biggest thing there is when I looked through it, I kept looking through it. Yeah every your one to your one your one looked through and then sort then of come back, back and came back. went back whereas when i looked through i i didn't sort of come back You're from staying it staying at it stayed stayed at it yeah you, you keep a consistent line then don't you yeah so even in like a race situation where you are looking that far ahead but does anything when you've got riders around you does that would that ever take your eyesight or only, only when you're really close to someone yeah you know because you you've got to watch them as well you yeah. know so that sort of puts you off a little bit again you can see in that corner like you were saying your eyes are constantly on the exit constantly there's through, no yeah. coming back there's no no second guessing it no. all the way around there too that's the biggest yeah. difference in commitment i suppose isn't it where you're committed to a corner, you're already yep. there. You don't have to yep. worry about what's coming up in the next five metres, ten metres, because yep. as soon as you've thought about it, you've passed it. Yeah, you've committed to it. Whereas we're a bit more, I guess, hazard aware. There we yeah, go. that's interesting, that. Yeah, that is interesting, isn't it? Cause it's it's they're all similar in ways, just each one gets a little bit longer, I think. Mm. You know, as in where you look at. Yeah, they're all similar, but do, does, does do any do, do you guys think there's anything to be learned? I mean, now looking at that and kind of thinking about where you're looking and then seeing where Jason's looking, is that kind of something that you think, right? I'm gonna I'm, next time I'm out on track, I'm gonna train my eyes to look where I want to be, not where I am. Is I a lot of it's down to confidence, mm. confidence yeah. in the technology, as in the motorbike, um, where you are, but also in your ability. Yeah. So if you know, if you know that's how that yeah you're you're committed to that line you can start looking over there yeah but seeing what we've seen right here yeah definitely so if we go out and do it again i think you'd see a big difference right. yeah. no not a big difference initially on lap two three four it would get you know the the, the, the longer you're on there conscience consciously worrying about or or not worrying but consciously trying to evolve your skill yeah uh, i think it would get better and better it's a great bit of technology it's a great bit of technology is there anything you think that this could be used of in a, a kind of a race context in terms of i mean probably not i guess at your level it's it, you're already doing what you're supposed to be doing but do you think if you were say making a, a transition from being a, a, a kind of a track day expert to being a club racer <coughs> yeah do you think there's something absolutely. that a club racer could kind of learn from testing themselves like this I th I, absolutely i think you could um you could use it as long as you're comparing against someone else you know like your own stuff yeah you could see you could see improvements but i think if you had someone that was at a higher level than you and you're comparing against them on track same track same conditions i think you could um you could certainly pick some pick some things out even at even at the level that um you're racing at in, in british championship if you and your teammate had one it'd be quite interesting to see how you were different mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, if you're faster at one part of the track, whether they could pick something up and vice versa, you know. So, yeah, I think it's um, it's a really clever clever bit of kit. What do you think, Chris? Do you think there's something you, you could kind of like spend less time looking at the clocks and less time, <laughs> less time looking at your mates in the building? Yeah, that's it. I think 
as man said it's a, a trust in your ability really knowing that you're I'm too I'm too busy thinking and, and worrying about the stuff I'm doing in or coming up to the corner before even wanting to look look away from it so I guess yeah maybe improving some of my other areas of my riding before I even maybe look at this might be might be a good idea or whether this might actually just naturally help other areas of my yeah. riding develop yeah. so cool okay so that's our uh, experience on track where we've got, like I say, a completely sterile environment. There's not an awful lot to look at, a few white huts, what have you, but there's no lampposts, uh, there's no manhole covers, and there's no oncoming traffic. I wonder what it's going to be like when we take this system out on the road and what we're going to find out when we're actually in a kind of a real life environment. Let's have a look. Okay, so we've seen how eye tracking can help riders on track. But what really matters for me is out in the real world, on real roads with real weather and changeable tarmac and hazards like traffic and, and goodness knows what. So to help us make sense of what we look at when we're riding on the road, I've enlisted the help of Bennett's Bike Social, Stephen Lamb, who's their production manager. That's right. And so Stephen, if you could tell us uh, how much experience have you got? Give us a quick thumbnail sketch of, of... Yeah, so I passed my test in 97, just before they changed the rules. So I wobbled around Peterborough on a 125 for about a week, did a direct access, and then went out and bought a 600, which was exactly what we weren't supposed to do. <laughs> okay. Um, and although that was 20-something odd years ago, most of my riding was commuting. I was doing very low mileage every year. And to be honest, I think 10 or 15, mi 15 years of that so there's quite a, it's a lot of miles. To so be honest, I think 10 or 15 years of that was spent looking at the, the patch of tarmac six feet in front of the bike. Right, okay. So since I've joined Bike Social, my mileage has gone up. I've concentrated on, on bringing my eye line up, hopefully. Um, so I'm really interested to see today, you know, whether, whether that, that conscious effort really pays dividends. I mean, there's a, there's a gulf between our experience, isn't there? Um, there's not that much of a gulf. I mean, we've come to the same, we've got the same sort of, uh, roughly the same sort of time on bikes almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we've come by a different route. So I've been riding for, for over 30 years, uh, but 28 of those have been a, as a professional road tester. So I've ridden so many bikes in yeah. so many conditions um, in, all over the place. It's, it's, um, I've had a ton of experience, but the other thing I've done which most people probably don't do, is I've kind of had to sit down and think about things because I'm writing features about them. So I've been thinking about what I look at all the time. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking about uh, avoiding hazards, um, like you know those trees and the manholes and all that kind of stuff, and yeah. where I'm actually looking. And, yeah. and, and looking at cars that come past, like this fella here. <laughs> So the stuff that's always catching your eye line, you know. Um, so I've always kind of been conscious of where I look. Uh, when you were looking at the tarmac, were you conscious of the fact that you should have been looking further or did you just not know that? Um, I think I probably was conscious. You read, you know, I, like everybody, I read all the magazines that were out at the time and it all talks about raising your eye line, raising your eye line. But I think there was that, there was that just that sheer fear mm. of, oh my God, there's a piece of gravel in the road. There's a, there's a puddle, there's a little bit of oil. You know, the, dark, the road's gone a little bit dark. Am I going to slip on that? So there was all this fear, mm. which actually was, was a little bit self-perpetuating because mm. you, you're just concentrating on that. And then I did a little bit of, um, a little bit of training last year with rapid training. Mm -hmm. And we worked really on, on raising my eye line, looking through the corner, looking to the next corner rather than in front of you. Mm. And I think something, something just switched in my brain that said, yeah, actually... I don't need to worry about what's immediately in front of me because I've already assessed that before I got there. Let's mm. let's raise it and look at the next corner. So it'll be interesting to see if today really has has proved that I've I've changed my riding style that much. Yeah, it will. It's it's interesting that you talk about sort of looking right down at your front wheel. Of course, the other thing is that if you do look at your what's under your front wheel, you can't react to it anyway. No, no, so it's a complete waste <laughs> of time. Right. It's just, yeah. but it's it's your default <laughs> setting, and and it's interesting yeah. that we were talking about riding in the wet and how when you ride in the wet. 
even experienced riders like you and I, our eye line naturally tends to drop a little bit. You can't help. And sometimes, yeah. I don't know about you, but I have the feeling that I just have to keep raising it up again and just, yeah. it's not forcing yourself to do it. You just kind of, every now and then you oh, catch yourself kind of going, yeah, keep it up, look at where you're going. Yeah, it is for me. I, I, I find my, my eye line drops and you get that little bit of fear comes in and your speed comes down a little bit. And, and, you, and I go, oh, what am I doing differently? That's it, eye line. And as soon as you, as soon as you take your eye line back up again, speeds just naturally increase a little yeah. bit you feel comfortable if the bike moves around a little bit you just go oh, okay because because actually it doesn't doesn't feel that much when you're on the on the uh, on the horizon and so just a quick bit about sort of actually they, we talk a lot about reading the road and, and what's your understanding of what reading the road actually means well i did a little bit of advanced driving as well uh, about 10 15 years ago so i've got a little bit of background in that in terms of trying to predict where the road actually goes. Using... So that's what reading the road is, isn't it? It's, it's reading where the road is going when you yes. don't know. Yes, absolutely. You've never ridden it and before. It's, and it's using, um, it's using everything around you, really. It could be that cars coming towards you are a little bit slower than you would expect, so that might indicate that there's a tight bend coming up. It's using the telegraph poles to see roughly where they go, although, of course, you can't rely on that because they might mm. shoot across a field, as they probably do around here. It's following hedge lines. It's it's using the information that's provided to you. There's there's a wealth of information on road signs that are provided to us, and nine times out of ten we just we just ignore it yeah. and we just go barreling past it. But actually, that's telling you a story about what the road's going to do. What about the, what about vanishing points? Because to me, that's always a, that's the that's the, the fundamental principle of reading a road is to follow that vanishing point so that you can the converging curbs that come together. Uh, and and the old story goes that if you're coming towards a corner and you're looking at where the curbs meet and they begin to come towards you as you're breaking into them, then you need to keep braking. You need to keep slowing. But as soon as they you match the speed of the corner radius, they start to somehow just kind of disappear out of view. And that's the point where you can come back onto a neutral throttle, not gas it, no, yeah. but just be ready to accelerate and follow the, that vanishing point through the corner, always watching it, always keeping your eyes fixed as far ahead as you can on that piece of tarmac doesn't let you go faster specifically but it does let you be smoother because you don't have to over break you're not thinking oh I don't know where I'm going you already know because you're watching it mm. um, that's always kind of been my real crucial understanding of, of reading the road but you're right there is that whole yeah, yeah. there's the everything else and yeah. I guess I guess the big thing though is, is also turning everything that you're talking about into a second nature yes absolutely. because if you have to think it it's too late again so it's, it's kind of you have to learn it and then learn it so it becomes an automatic routine it's a subconscious thing if you find yourself kind of looking at trees going oh i can see some trees that are moving to the right that's kind of not a good thing no, you want to no. be just doing it yeah and that was that was a lot of the, the rapid training uh mentality really i mean it wasn't it wasn't your strict um roadcraft iam you know they, they were talking about iam we're talking about having effectively five positions in in the in your lane yeah and oh i need to be in this position for this circuit it was more about reading the road and if if a sign comes up that says double bend knowing what you're, it means. you're drilled in the routine that you're going to be in this position as you enter you're going to move to this position and then you're going to move to this position as you exit and so you don't need to worry about that you don't even need to think about you it. you don't need to think about it yeah. all of your thought bandwidth is free because you know what you're going to do with that bend yeah. and then all you've got to concentrate is oh is there a junction mid bend is there a pedestrian that might step into the road yeah is there some wet leaves in the middle of the bend that's going to going to make me deviate from that pre-planned thought process and I that think, helped me a lot cool well i think now is a good time then for us to go out and find out if we're actually looking at all these things <laughs> you're talking about what are we just talking about <laughs> we're we just looking at oh, we're going to do it on some country roads and we're going to do it in town yeah no that sounds brilliant so i think we should get off and have a look Voiceover Simon here. Uh, we have Stephen on the left and we have me on the right. We're approaching a downhill off camber right hander, and you can see here all the furniture, all the trees, and stuff. And if you look carefully at there, see how Stephen, Stephen's eyes, even though he doesn't know this road particularly well, his eyes are looking all the time for where the road is going. He can tell that he's coming up, you can see he's coming up to a right hander, and his eyes naturally go for that gap in the hedge to try and get the best advantages as he can to, to see what's coming, which is really impressive. Um, both have quite a high eye line. And then here we are again, we're sort of scanning backwards and forwards, looking through the corner. 
uh, sort of eyes coming back down towards the tarmac just to check what's coming under the wheels and then looking forward again through the corner to see which way it goes. And then we both set up a nice high eye line. Look, it's, it's really right into the distance, right to the vanishing point of the road. Now we come up to approach a right-hander. It's uphill, but again, the camera's not brilliant and the surface is a bit gnarly. Again, eyes darting backwards and forwards. If there is any difference between the two of us, it's that because I know the road a bit better, my eye line's a bit more consistent. I don't need to keep double-checking where the road is going. Uh, I, I know where it's going, so I don't do quite as much of the flicking backwards and forwards that Steve does. Um, and then uh, here we come up to a T-junction. Again, as I don't think Steve quite knows there's one coming, but as soon as he twigs it, my eyes are darting backwards and forwards, but as soon as he sees it, he starts looking side to side as far as possible. And then we spin it round. And then for the next section, we're accelerating away from that T-junction, heading back down the road. So what was the uh, left-hander is now the right-hander, and now it's downhill and off camber. Not a particularly pleasant corner. But again, Steve's a little bit unsure, so you can see his eye line is slightly lower because he's double-checking the tarmac. It's a bit patchy, it, was, it had been raining, so there's a few damp, damp spots in places. So again, my eyes straight to the distance, straight to the, straight to the furthest point. Steve double-checking a little bit, making sure he knows where he's going or what the tarmac's doing. And then through this tunnel of trees into a left-hander. We're both pretty much the same. Our eyes are just following the line of the road, occasionally flicking back, double check ourselves, but keeping a really high eye line. And keeping an eye out for this farm here on the left hand side, there's a possibility of traffic turning out, so having a quick look to the side there. And then the final section on the B road, a little complex section of corners here. Um, and again, it's quite flat, so you can see right across to the other side of the road, and we're both looking again as far as we can. It's interesting to note Steve turns his head, he, move, he has a lot more head movement than I do. Uh, I tend to move my eyes, he tends to sort of actually turn his whole head. But again, we're looking through the corner. I mean, the only difference really is that because Steve doesn't quite know where he's going, I've got a much more consistent eye line. I'm not really double checking myself. Um, a bit like Jason on the track, you just sort of pick one point and that's the point you go for because you don't need to keep checking what the road is doing. But if you don't know the road, then yeah, your eyes are going to constantly keep coming backwards and check backwards and forwards, checking where you are. And here we are again in town on a pretty busy road with quite a lot going on. Steve and I were looking at pretty much the same sort of thing, so we're just going to show one ride of me uh, so we can see a bit better what I'm looking at as I'm riding. And the answer is pretty much everything. This is almost the complete opposite of the B road, where it was all about keeping your head relatively still and letting your gaze rest for as long as possible on the vanishing point. Um, you're spotting hazards way down the road and giving yourself the maximum time to react. Here you haven't the luxury of distance and time to react so it's all about trying to scan your entire field of vision and picking out potential hazards. What's that car doing? What's coming out of the side turning? Are those people about to cross the road? Is that barking dog going to make a run for it? Or, or maybe the owner will? So you're basically on high alert. Notice it's both hands covering clutch and brake levers for instant reaction and control. And here we have a bit of balance practice. Traffic lights are good for practicing to hold the bike on the brakes and testing how long you can keep your feet up. Is it gonna work? Yep, yeah. <laughs> I just got away with it on that one. Um, so yeah, so you're just scanning the, uh, the horizon, your surroundings the whole time. Um, notice how the, the gaze is, is sort of predominantly to the left because that's the side where I have least time to react. It's the side with the nearest danger. Also notice the, the occasional extreme sideways glance. I think it's really important to take in the sort of the, the general ambience of your riding scenery because it's context. It's, this is your environment. And, and to control it, you kind of need to be in the moment. A little bit more uh, traffic light balance practice here. don't think we're gonna make no <laughs> don't manage it this time but it's all good it's it's all practice it's all worth uh, it's all about machine control but again you know just scanning absolutely everything I mean your eyes are so busy the whole time I think that's that's why it's quite fatiguing to constantly ride in traffic all the time oh in the old days couriers must must have been so exhausted at the end of the day having to deal with so many things going on at once But there we are, I think that's the trick to riding in town. 
Keep your eyes on absolutely everything. You're always on the go, looking at every single scene. Okay, so we've done our country road riding, we've done our town riding. Steve, that was, I don't know about you, that was fascinating. It's almost like, even if the glasses weren't recording what we were looking at, the idea of something measuring what your eyes are looking at yeah. makes you concentrate yeah. on yeah, what you're looking at. Yeah, yeah. It was really interesting. I think it'd be a good exercise for people just to put an empty pair of shades on and just go out and ride around and pretend, because it really trains you and, and, and reminds you of what you're actually looking at. Yeah, and I think it helps with the with the uh, urban riding you know the first bit on the country roads you, you're kind of conscious you've got them on and I, I was certainly making an effort oh you know make sure I'm looking at different things and then you go <laughs> well but once once you've got all the people and the traffic and pedestrian crossings and dogs and everything in the way you all thought of the glasses disappears and you really just concentrate true. on you haven't got a choice have you life. no your no, eyes are just you, really busy and, you, and you're really scanning for every every possibility just to see if something's going to step out in front of you. The or... contrast, was, contrast was really marked. So, so we're riding on the, the, the country lane. I don't know about you, but I, like you, I was conscious of trying not to act with my eyes, you know, yeah, yeah. But, and trying to look where I would naturally. Uh -huh. um, but because of the, the, the pace I was riding at, which is kind of the normal pace that I'd, I'd ride, I guess, um, I was, you know, just looking ahead all the time because I was thinking, you know, I wanted to hold my speed. I don't want to slow down too much. So I need to be able to see what's mm -hmm. coming the first sign I get even before I can see the corner I know you know it's over that hedge it's over that mm -hmm. tree whatever mm -hmm. um, and so I was really conscious of, of, of not blinking very much I don't think and, and always looking as far ahead and only just occasionally flicking down to mirrors mostly yeah. um, and around me but in yeah. the town yeah. oh, blimey yes. you just yes. realize Absolute how busy opposite. your eyes are yes. yeah you I mean, do. even mirrors and you know there's so many junctions and, and traffic coming from all directions taxis pulling out you just you just never know where, whether you're safe or not. So I was just checking mirrors all the time. I was trying to get ahead. Um, on the way out, I was just trying to get ahead of everything. Coming back, mm -hmm. it was just all queued up anyway. So then it's literally just survival mode. You're just looking everywhere. That's exactly what it is, yeah. yeah. And it's all, you, 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 it's kind of like there's a load of body language going on. You're reading people's intentions at the side of the road. Do, have they seen you? Do they look like they're not going to look? Do they mm -hmm. look like they're just going to walk out? Mm -hmm. Are there any small kids that might just run out anyway? Any yeah. animals? Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's like, it's... It's, it's a good exercise. It kind of is good brain training, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, 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 very much so. Um, yeah, yeah, and it'd be so it'll be interesting to see, you know, to, to, to sort of to have this comparison between what you're looking at yeah, and what I'm, I'm looking at. I mean, when we were riding on the country road, again, were you kind of pretty much focused in the distance? Yeah, and I think that was half the problem because you're you haven't. I would say you've got nothing really much to look at, but there's. In comparison to the to the city centre, there's so much less to look at, and so you kind of concentrate on on the vanishing point, and you go, well, should I be looking at something else now? So you kind of have a little look in your mirrors, so there's nothing there. There are a few so, junctions, aren't there? Yeah, there's stuff. a few junctions mm. just to check. Yeah. Um, but to be honest, most of that is in your peripheral vision anyway. So uh, I'll I'll be really interested to see if I was really looking at the things that I think I was looking at, or whether whether really the eyes were all over the place and. And I wasn't really concentrating as much as I thought I was. Peripheral vision's a really interesting one, isn't it? Because we're not measuring that. No. And I don't really, short of, not in a live situation, I'm not sure how you do measure it. Short of having actors standing in the hedges waving <laughs> or something, you know, that you're not supposed to look at. Yeah. So I, I'm not really sure with, with peripheral vision um, uh, what's going on and whether things, because we're so focused on the vanishing point, are we actually going to see if something's ready to come out here or, or if we miss something or does do we just see it and react to it and then not know that we didn't actually look at it yeah i would be oh. interesting to see i think certainly in town you know there's times when you're not going to be looking at the lights of the car in front because you're going so slow speeds anyway as soon yes. as those lights come on you've got to be blind not to see that he's braking or you know even if you're not looking at it even yeah even though you're concentrating on the horizon so I think it's, it's almost a conscious technique that, isn't yes, it? I yes, found that I was yeah. looking more over here, but I was kind of, my, half of my brain was going, when are the red lights going to come on? When are the, when, when are the lights going to change? The traffic yeah. light's going to change? Yeah. You know, you're not really looking at them, but no, they, they're no, there. there's that anticipation, isn't there, that the yeah. lights are going to change. 
So that's been a really, really interesting few days. Following people's eyes, seeing what they're looking at, checking out what racers look at, what ordinary track riders look at, what novice track riders look at when they're riding. And it's also been interesting finding out what we've been seeing yeah, on yeah. the road, on the country roads and on the, uh, the town roads. Um, I think you know, the overarching lesson that we can draw from this is that look, I know it sounds like a really obvious thing to say, it's a really daft thing to say, but look around you, be aware of your environment, look as far ahead as you can, scan everything. You, you can't get too little information or too much information. You need everything crammed into your head. Um, but anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope we've, we've demonstrated something. Um, don't forget you can read the full review of this on www.bikesocial.co.uk. Uh, and don't forget, uh, check out Bennett's Rewards Schemes. It's amazing the amount of stuff they put into the industry. You might as well take advantage of it. Just have a look and see what you can get with the discounts and the special offers. And uh, thank you very, very much for watching. And that's the stuff you need to be concentrating on. But, but certainly looking at things and thinking about looking at things is, is that sounds incredibly stupid thing to say, looking at things. I'm just talking with her. Let's just, sorry. Let's do the sign off again. Yeah, let's do the sign off again. Because I wasn't actually focused on And action. God, I hate this. <laughs>